The wedding was the most magnificent event in the history of the empire. As the flood of well wishes flowed in, the reception gradually came to a close. Courtney, should I stop? Ugh, no. Please, what exactly do you want me to do? Can, can I touch mice? No. Despite the chaos of the evening, the newlywed special night had only just begun. Beneath the blue roof of the capital, there lived a count, whose life seemed to be constantly touched by the wind, or so the stories went. The roots of his life felt weak, much like the twigs hanging on for dear life. Yet, the foolish count remained blissfully unaware. Courtney, have you seen my necklace? My God, what are you wearing? Is there a problem? I thought I looked fine. Is that even a question? What's wrong with my dress? Honestly, what would you do without me? What will people think? Courtney, we're talking about the Duchess's tea party. Just yesterday, I reminded you how sensitive she is to the latest trends. This is exactly why, at your age, you're still an utter disgrace. Well, you're certainly lively this morning. Can't you see what you're doing will stain our family's reputation? Do you really believe something so trivial could tarnish it? I'm always painted as the villain in the Devon family. Between my overly sympathetic and weak-willed father, who has nothing to his name, and my vain mother with her well-to-do relatives, who refuse to help us, my only brother is a gambling fiend, and my sister-in-law is a crybaby. The Devon family sits on a mountain of debt, teetering on the edge of bankruptcy. I am the second-born, sandwiched between a brother and a sister. Put on, don't be stubborn, and do as I say, or we can forget about going. This is a summer dress. It's only May. In such circumstances, Courtney Devon found little room for hope. She was struck by the harsh realization that indulging in hope was a luxury she simply couldn't afford. It was cold under the blue roof, where the Count lived, and he ought to feel ashamed to call himself one. Everyone knew his shortcomings, yet he remained blissfully unaware of the judgments cast upon him. The foolish Count, indeed, was none the wiser. Life in the capital was as ruthless as a battlefield where swords clashed. The invitation marked only the beginning of their social journey. The roses in the imperial garden were exquisite, a sight to behold. It was no wonder that the rose was known as the queen of flowers. I'm freezing, someone remarked, noting how the seating arrangement clearly reflected the social hierarchy. Oh my, I've never seen this breed of flower before. My husband acquired this enhanced variety from a distant continent. What a romantic gesture, said Duchess Wrighton. I believe that is his way of saying you are as lovely as a rose. Given our placement at the outskirts, it's clear we're a family of no consequence, another voice lamented. I can't believe this. This is all your fault, Courtney. Are you happy with how we're being treated? If you'd only listened to me, we would never have been snubbed. Then why didn't you just turn down the invitation? Courtney shot back. What? If I decline the Duchess's invitation, who would ever invite me anywhere again? Even better, snubbed, she's right. Even the help are keeping their distance. Courtney understood her mother's frustration, especially since the lavender dress her mother had reserved for the occasion had been canceled by her. Each person seated nearby had their own reasons for being present. Everyone here is wearing dresses that were trendy last year or even the year before. Some lack fortune, while others lack connections. It's so cold. How dare you make me wear this flimsy thing in this weather? Give me a break. What's so great about this dress? I'll just be the laughingstock at the tea party. Being fashionable won't get us better seats. Wow. That's amazing. Lady Chelder, can you give us another demonstration? Of course. A pen that writes without ink. So what? And now, Tata. Wow. It really disappeared. Magic. Magic was woven into everyday items, from a cane that extended on its own to a kettle that boiled, without fire. Nobility typically didn't boil their own water. These were luxuries they could easily do without. Lady Chelder mentioned that the pens would be available for purchase next year. However, if anyone here is interested in a trial, I'll buy one, someone chimed in. So, they're individually handcrafted by a mage? I want one, too. I can only imagine how expensive it must be. Humph. The entire purpose of a pen is to record things. 
What use would we have for a pen like that? Isn't that right, mother? I also want to purchase one. Lady Chelder. Of course, Countess Devon. I will have it sent to your estate. I can't look away for two seconds. Courtney's exclaimed. Mother, we have no need for a pen of this kind. But Courtney, the words disappear without a trace. It's too amazing to pass up. I beg your pardon, Lady Chelder. Please remove my mother from the list. Courtney. But Lady Devon, I am extending a special half-price offer to the guests attending the tea party today. Won't you reconsider? I'm sorry, but we simply cannot afford such a luxury. We do not have the means to pay for it. Courtney, you are being incredibly rude. Lady Chelder, please disregard her words and have it sent to my estate. We're scrambling to sell anything we can just to make ends meet, and you want to splurge on a magic pen? What are you talking about? You're going to give people the wrong idea. Wrong idea? That's rich. It's no secret our family is about to hit rock bottom. People will only mock and ridicule us for reckless spending. If I don't erase it now, they will hound us for the money. I'm sure of it. My apologies, Lady Chelder. It's fine, she replied. The rumors about the Devon family's financial struggles were indeed true. It was said that the cow was caught up in yet another fraud. Again? He's practically doing charity work, someone remarked. He would bend over backward for anyone who so much has looked his way. This was never my intention, but a moment of humiliation is infinitely better than being at the mercy of a lone shark. It's all true, anyway. Father was swindled yet again, and our family is struggling. Even so, Lady Devon was too harsh. This is nothing new. It's always been this way. Can she ever hope to get married with that sharp tongue of hers? I doubt the Devon family could even afford a dowry. Yes, but I can endure it. Can you imagine her as a daughter-in-law? I would run the other way. I'm used to this. It's the story of my life. In the world of high society, a noble woman living beyond her means faced less scrutiny than one who had lost all dignity. The Devon estate might be a source of anger for its residents, but they could hardly afford a coachman and had to rent a carriage. They believed they were doing the right thing. Lady Devon. Courtney. A voice called out, breaking the tension. Elise, the wife of Courtney's brother Frederick, entered, distressed. He left. Jack packed his bags and took off. Don't cry, Ellie. We can always hire another butler, someone reassured her. But who will dress me now? Who will do the laundry? The housework? Just kill me now. Don't worry, it will all work itself out, another voice said, though it felt like a hollow promise. It was uncanny how both women chased after wealth when their own pockets were bare. Do you not understand our situation, one said. If we have no butler, then pick up a broomstick and do the housework and laundry yourself. Poor Martha has graciously prepared all our meals without pay, and you want to hire a new butler? But Courtney, the other protested. And here I am, doing everything I can to safeguard our state. You can only deny reality for so long, Courtney snapped, clearly frustrated. Please, I'm begging you, just get a grip. Why are you so mad all of a sudden, Lady Courtney? Someone asked, trying to ease the tension. It's all right. I understand, a calm voice replied, as if to placate the angry atmosphere. See? Martha herself says it's fine. The one advantage of an empty house was that it amplified every sound. There wasn't a soul in the capital who would even consider working for them now. Don't expect anything, a voice warned. One day, our family fell into utter ruin. If my family had just been slow to grasp reality, I would have been more understanding. But for as long as I could remember, the Devon family had always been in hard times, over 20 years of it. They had mastered the art of living a pipe dream. Annie, are you sad? A young boy asked, innocent and concerned. Eddie, she sighed. He had inherited his father's green eyes and his mother's blonde hair, but his personality was nothing like theirs. He was her nephew and her angel. Did you enjoy your nap? She asked. Yeah. Where did you go today? He replied, shifting the conversation. Just outside. I should have brought back some biscuits from the tea party. There were desserts you've never even seen before. If you weren't here, I would have run away from home a long time ago. 
and then I would have picked up a job as a housekeeper or a barmaid. This empty title means nothing to me. Hey, that tickles, he laughed. I long to come up with a plan to raise money. I have to do something for Eddie's sake. Auntie, you alone will lead a different life from the rest of the Devon family, someone warned, hinting at the changes ahead. Courtney, this has gone too far, another voice exclaimed. Is this what passes for soup these days? And why is the bread hard as a rock? You should be grateful for what you have. It's only thanks to Martha that we're not starving. Courtney had taken charge of managing the family's expenses. Honey, talk some sense into her, someone pleaded. Me? You can't expect us to live off scraps. Courtney replied, exasperated. After the Devon family fell victim to yet another scam, their finances had dwindled further. Courtney, listen to your mother. We still have last year's rental. If we spend all of that money, when will we ever clear our debts? Is that the best you've got? Courtney snapped. We should still be able to maintain an ordinary lifestyle. For us, it's a luxury just to put food on the table. If you'd done your part as the head of the house, we wouldn't even be in this situation, would we? Courtney, surely we can't continue living this way. Your brother said he knows a really good investor. If we can just provide the seed money. Seed money? More like money for his stakes. Fools. Again, I'm the bad guy here. Arg. I feel lousy now. Eat up, Eddie. Okay. You too, the boy responded cheerfully, trying to lighten the mood. How much longer can we live like this? The future looks bleak. While the Devon family faced significant debts, the father also had substantial sums owed to him. However, this was hardly comforting since there were no official debt agreements in place. Most of the debts originated from dubious businesses, and their current status was unknown. Despite the dire situation, there was still a potential way to alleviate the family's financial burden, selling the last of their northern land. This sale could ease their debts. However, selling the estate would allow them to retain their noble status, but would forfeit their title of count. One character couldn't care less about her brother's fate, but grappled with whether she had the right to determine her nephew's future. Another option was to sell the estate and relocate to the countryside. Although it wouldn't completely resolve their debts immediately, making consistent payments would ensure that by the time Edvard reached adulthood, he would inherit a debt-free legacy. Absolutely not. Mother protested vehemently, creating a hurdle in their plans. Ultimately, they felt trapped beyond hope. Suddenly, a noise interrupted the conversation. In the raucous house, one voice exclaimed, I told you I'll pay you back. A rugged figure scoffed. If I had a coin for every time I heard that, he looked around unimpressed. There's nothing in this house worth a decent price. What do you take the Count's family for? Frederick Devon, the eldest son and Courtney's brother, was confronted about the money he owed. I don't care, came the harsh response. Where's the money you owe us? What's going on here? One asked, observing the tension. He doesn't feel an ounce of shame, does he? Who are you? Another demanded. I am Courtney, his younger sister, she replied, stepping forward. Oh, looks like he's already taken a beating, the man noted. Well, he probably had it coming. If they won't think twice about disrespecting the prized family heir, I doubt they'd show me, his sister, any consideration. Then are you going to pay off his debt, he pressed. It's getting late. Why don't you come back in the morning? Courtney suggested. Was that loud enough to rouse everyone in the house? He retorted, clearly irritated. What is the matter with you? We will pay you back. I never said we wouldn't. Then pay up, he demanded. I've seen more debt statements in my life than I can count. Is this some kind of mistake? What an outrageous amount. So many pages. This is roughly half the value of the estate. Baron Marlin on note, the man continued, a high-ranking noble family ruling the gambling realm. It's safe to say that every coin owed leads right back to them. But why would the Baron lend my brother money? Came the incredulous question. Out of the goodness of his heart, what else? What will your repayment be? The creditor pressed. How do you expect me to acquire this kind of money in the dead of night? Then empty out the house, the man instructed. So that's what they were after, she realized. They just wanted to snatch our estate at a bargain price. Listen, 
I will personally meet with the Baron tomorrow, she insisted. Who's to say he'll even meet with you? He replied dismissively. If we decide to sell the house, she began, I have to send them back. We will make the sale no matter what, the other insisted, eyes filled with determination. And pay back in coin. How can we be sure you can be trusted? Came the skeptical reply. Take the bait. What? Do you have any proof that you work for the Marlin family? Answer me. What exactly is your relationship with the Marlin family? Get away from me. It wasn't me. She was the one all up in my face. Eddie, no. Auntie, when did they get here? Didn't I expect they'd be hiding in their rooms, someone muttered. Hey, what? Help me up, came the plea. Okay. Perfect. Now I have a legitimate reason to kick them out. They talk a big game, but they're just errand boys. They don't have the spine to face the consequences of their actions. If you leave right now, I will overlook this incident. Or would you prefer to escalate this matter? Striking a noblewoman. If you'll excuse us then, one said nervously. Freddy, honey, are you all right? Someone asked, noticing the bruises on his face. Look what they did to your face. Auntie, are you okay? Are you hurt? Eddie cried out. I'm sorry for scaring you. I'm okay. Courtney reassured him. About time you asked. I'm fine. Why don't we all head back to bed? How we're going to turn in now? Good night. Wait. How can you fall asleep at a time like this? One exclaimed, shocked. Let's talk this out. Talking is reserved for humans, you animal. Don't even think about sleeping tonight. One day, an old man lamented the dowry of his daughter, whose unfortunate suitor turned out to be none other than Frederick. With a track record of winning only one out of twenty games, his gambling streak continued to haunt them. Consequently, poor Elise was married off to Frederick, who not only gambled away his marriage, but also put their home at risk. Unfortunately, the Baron was currently out of town on business, complicating matters further. You didn't mention that before, one noted. In any case, his lordship is away. I suggest you wait for his return and reschedule your meeting, Lady Devon. I wish you safe travels. The conversation left Lady Devon feeling uneasy. The servant had not clarified that the Baron was unavailable until she revealed her identity. Frustration surged within her. Damn it, that hurts, she muttered, assessing the pain in her ankle. Had she sprained it yesterday? The ache was a reminder of the challenges ahead. Meeting the Baron had always seemed unlikely, but doing nothing would likely lead to a repeat of the previous night's chaos. I never said I wouldn't pay them back, she reminded herself, recalling that the debt agreement had no guarantees. All she wanted was a bit more time to settle the amount owed. It's not my debt to begin with. Why must I endure this treatment? And why have I grown so accustomed to it? I should have just dealt with that scoundrel myself. Consider yourself lucky, Frederick Devon, she thought bitterly. If my ankle hadn't been throbbing, I would have thrown a few punches. As she limped home, she resolved to endure the pain. It was a shame that she hadn't confronted him more aggressively. Courtney. Courtney, a voice called, echoing through her thoughts. Why? Did Frederick stir up trouble again, she asked. No. Phew. Anyway, compose yourself, came the response. That's not. Take your own advice, she interjected, weary. I'm tired. I should go in and soak my ankle. His Majesty just... Yes, yes. Courtney, my daughter. They've always had a few loose screws, but never to this extreme, she thought, bracing herself. His Majesty has sent someone over with a message. He intends to marry you to the Crown Prince. Thank you, God. Courtney exclaimed, momentarily stunned. What nonsense is this? We're on the verge of losing our estate. This certainly isn't the first time, she lamented, recalling their family's repeated misfortunes. But no matter how many times we find ourselves in this same predicament, this family never learns. Are you having a senior moment, someone teased, trying to lighten the mood? His Majesty desires a marital union with a count family on the brink of ruin? Have you fallen victim to yet another scam? Father? Of course not. A messenger arrived from the Imperial Palace. If you had seen him with your own eyes, you wouldn't dare doubt me. It seems there may have been a mistake. He must have meant to go to the Levon household, not the Devon household. 
That would make far more sense, wouldn't it? Is she right? Unlike the Devon family, the Levon family possesses a vast and bountiful estate. That never even occurred to me. Glance, as it happens, they have a daughter who is of age. I don't want to hear it. Trembra, Trains exclaimed. Tomorrow, you will be granted an imperial audience, so be ready. But it's likely just a mix-up. You still want me to go? I don't even have anything to wear. Just borrow something from your mother. I need my rest now. Mother, father, both of you need to snap out of your daydreams. Are you sure you're all right, my ladies? Yes, I'm fine. Why don't you retire for the night, Martha? Yes, my lady. In other words, the crown princess. Has the dictionary definition of that word changed recently? The emperor's sole successor is the crown prince, Richard. Does he even know my name? The only times we crossed paths were at the festival hosted at the Imperial Palace this year and last year, which all nobles of age are required to attend. He also made an appearance at the tea party as well, but I was always too busy keeping an eye on my family to speak a word to him. But there's a good chance he knows my face, especially after yesterday's incident, which was not the first. An incident that entertaining is impossible to forget has a bad reputation. Richard, he is beautiful and an esteemed scholar and warrior. What's more, he is rumored to be well-mannered and affable. Some noble women have even formed fan clubs in honor of the prince, with names like We Love the Crown Prince Club. There were some strange rumors circulating, too, though she couldn't recall them. But that's just the nature of rumors. No, no, no. Besides, come tomorrow. It will all be forgotten. Well, Courtney, it is an honor to serve as your escort today. Please get in. But this is the Devon family's estate. Are you sure you're at the right address? Indeed, I am Lady Courtney Devon. Indeed, I am Lady Courtney Devon. She couldn't believe it. Had he truly chosen her? This felt like a dream come true. But if it was a dream, she thought they would soon wake up. The thought that the emperor might have mistaken her for someone else crossed her mind, or perhaps Frederick had lost yet another card game. It seemed there was no other explanation. Yes, this was all one big misunderstanding. The curtains looked real, like butter, and that was all it was. Yet, if this was merely a misunderstanding, why was she on her way to the palace? She felt the urge to run away. Good God, we have arrived. As expected of the imperial carriage, they had made it in record time. Even if it meant straining her ankle, she needed to walk properly. She imagined how appalled everyone would be if the wrong bride hobbled in. Lady Devon, please change into these shoes, the advisor said, offering her a plush pair of silk flats. Did they notice back then? How should I react, she thought. She had never been treated with such consideration before. Are they comfortable on your feet? Yes, let us make our way inside now. Ah, uh, I see Lady Courtney is joining us as well, the emperor remarked. Greetings, your majesty, she stammered. Please, there is no need to stand on ceremony. Have a seat. So, have you given it any thoughts? Pardon? I don't understand what. I sent a messenger yesterday, did I not? Were my intentions not made perfectly clear? At this, she flinched, feeling overwhelmed. Permission to speak, your majesty? By all means. Do you have any further requests you wish to make? Strange. It was almost as if he favored her, or was she imagining it? I believe there has been a mistake. A mistake? Why would your majesty bestow such an offer upon me? I simply cannot fathom it. I can't bring myself to say the word marriage aloud. That is not to say I am ungrateful for such an honor. That settles it. Pardon? Honor, you say? Then we will move forward without delay. Pardon? Can you really decide the crown prince's marriage this abruptly? He's your son. The palace will handle all wedding preparations, so you can rest easy. Yes. Thank you. Is this what it means to have power? We shall discuss the specifics at length. In the meantime, Lady Courtney, why don't you step away and enjoy a cup of tea? Even though I have one right here, she thought, realizing it figured that fathers typically made all the marriage decisions. My God, is it possible there is a secret about my origins that I'm unaware of? Or perhaps His Majesty is beholden to me in some way? Lady Devon, if this is, in fact, reality, 
It must be the work of the devil. Allow me to show you the way. Everything went seamlessly, as if it were all carefully orchestrated. She was escorted by the emperor's advisor, who matched her pace out of consideration for her injured ankle. She was almost thankful for the pain. It assured her this was no dream. Step. We've come a long way, he said. She had been prepared to wait leisurely for her father outside, and she imagined she would be seeing him soon, Crown Prince Richard. Courtney wondered what the Crown Prince thought about marrying her, a daughter from a lowly, insignificant family. It felt as if she was being led to the gallows. Courtney. Courtney? Ah. Ha. Ha. I beg your pardon, Lady Devon. I've been waiting for you, with bated breath. She was taken aback by the sight of the beautiful man before her. With his blonde hair and blue eyes, he looked like a prince straight out of a fairy tale. I'm sure you'll grow up to be just as dashing as a prince, she thought. The fairy tale prince was real, and his eyes were bluer than a clear lake on a lovely autumn day. If the heir to the throne were chosen purely based on looks, there was no doubt he would become the next emperor. Truly, such a handsome man commanded great power. Lady Devon? The sound of his voice startled her. The sculpture talks. What the hell is wrong with me? I... I'm sorry. Sorry? For what? That was terribly rude of me. Well, you're just so handsome. She felt overwhelmed, wishing someone would end her embarrassment. He may have been handsome, but that didn't give her the right to gawk at him. Thank you. If I may be so bold, he really is easy on the eyes, he can do whatever he wants. Wait a second. I take that back. Let me down. My apologies, however. This is a matter of urgency. Someone else is here? She was here from the beginning. Did she see me making a fool of myself? Wait. Your Highness, I can do it. I will have a look. Fortunately, she didn't fracture any bones. With plenty of rest, it will heal in no time. The swelling has gone down. In other words, it should heal on its own, right? She may run a fever, so I will have the medication delivered to her residence. If you will excuse me, then... Can I slip my shoes back on? You were fine just a few days ago. How did you get hurt? Pardon? A few days ago? Have we crossed paths before? If my memory serves correctly, this happened at least a month ago. When I heard you were going to be at Duchess Wrighton's tea party, I made sure to stop by as well. But I arrived too late and only caught a glimpse of your back. It's almost as if the crown prince came solely to see me. Your Highness, are you truly fine with marrying me? I understand this may come as a shock to you. Did he not see her touching her feet just moments ago? But I should have proposed to you first. Now wait a minute. He can't be serious. Lady Devon, will you marry me? In that moment, she almost caught herself saying yes. His extremely strong jawline dazzled her momentarily, but she needed to regain her senses. I think there's been some sort of misunderstanding. I'm not particularly pretty. My family is hardly even worthy of a noble title. I don't understand why you would ask this of me. You don't even know me. What could you possibly see in me? Courtney, may I call you Courtney? It's a little too late to ask that now. Tell me, what do you know about me, Courtney? Um, you are the crown prince of this country. Why are all the bad things the first to come to mind? Any mention of the crown prince always elicited a peculiar reaction. On the surface, he seemed the perfect gentleman, but there was an underlying strangeness about him. If she had to guess, his personality was probably, um, I'm the worst. How could I even think such things about someone who has been nothing but kind to me? I couldn't care less about what others think of you. Do not worry about everything else. All you have to do is consider whether or not you will accept my proposal. I doubt anyone in the Empire would ever dare to disobey the Crown Prince's orders. But he's not giving me an order. Rather, he's seeking my permission. I can't possibly doubt his intentions. All right, thank you. You will not regret this. Yes. Ah. What is it? It's nothing. That was the hand that touched my foot. Courtney was at a loss for what was happening. She shared her confusion with the attendant. According to the Emperor, they were not expected to provide a dowry. Instead, they would be receiving one. Your Highness, what is it about me that caught your fancy? I will come by your estate soon to explain everything, he replied. There's no need for all that trouble. 
My estate isn't fit to accommodate your highness, Courtney insisted. From now on, you need not concern yourself with such trivial matters. No one has ever said that to me, not even my own parents. But how did you injure your ankle? I tripped. Courtney felt as though her life had changed overnight, as if God or the devil had intervened. I don't want to fall asleep. What if I wake up and realize none of this is real? What is all this? What's the problem? They're necessities anyway. No. We have no need for such fancy silverware. But it would be rude to refuse a gift, don't you think? You have nothing to worry about. It's far ruder to take everything they give you. Honestly, you're going to be the crown princess soon. Show some decorum. Where should I put this? Courtney looked around in disbelief. What is going on here? I'm truly grateful for all of this, but there's no point in showering us with lavish gifts when my father will just give it away, my mother will squander it all, and my brother will blow it on gambling. These people won't even appreciate such help. May I have a moment of your time? A voice interrupted. Hansen, the crown prince's attendant, entered. This way. He already seems right at home here. Please have a seat. Bring out some tea, he added. Courtney was amazed by the transformation of her estate. It was almost unrecognizable. I've laid out some refreshments for you to enjoy before mealtime, Hansen said. I wonder if Eddie's had breakfast. The young master of this estate was served the same spread after breakfast. Thank you, she replied. Hansen remarked, a noble woman who throws a fit over expensive gifts yet graciously extends her thanks for the snacks offered to her nephew. She is the woman chosen by the crown prince himself. She's not a bad choice for a crown princess, but only time will tell if she is truly fit for the reason she was chosen. What did you wish to speak to me about? Courtney asked. Well, as you may have guessed, we are acting under the orders of the crown prince. He has sent the gifts, hoping you will freely make use of them. Please do not feel burdened in any way. I feel extremely burdened. I appreciate the thought, but it's excessive. We don't even have anyone for the upkeep. Are you referring to the gifts? This puts me in a difficult position. I shall oversee things here until you hire a butler. After all, we have been instructed to remain by your side until you move into the palace. The gifts are nothing more than household items. More importantly, the crown prince wishes for you to live in utmost comfort before your union. Pardon? Was I too obvious with my lie? Hansen admitted, they are indeed of a more luxurious nature. But did you just address me as your highness? Is there a problem? We met just yesterday. It's too soon for that. As you wish, Lady Devon. Then you may call me Hansen. Yes, please. Courtney found it strange. Her family had always been snubbed, even by their help. The Devon household had never known anything but ill-mannered servants, but now the crown prince's attendant was treating her with respect. I shall pass this along to the crown prince, Hansen stated. I do not have the authority to make this decision on my own, he continued. I understand. Thank you. It would be rude of me to continue refusing him. Your Highness, may I tidy up your chambers? Which color bedding do you prefer? What would you like for dinners? Your Highness, he called again. Stop calling me that. We're not even married yet. Courtney stood amidst the fanciest furniture, glamorous clothes, and extravagant shoes, feeling overwhelmed by the sparkle that surrounded her. She thought it was as if she had covered herself in flour, an absurd contrast to her shabby appearance, akin to a crow. Lady Devon, could you turn around for me? As the attendant disappeared, she suggested choosing a darker fabric to wrap around Courtney's waist. Good idea, came the response. Then, to accentuate Lady Devon's shiny black hair, we will go with. That's it for this dress. Now, let's try on the next one. The crown prince had instructed them to spare no expense and to select only the latest styles for her fitting that day. Ever since her ankle had healed, she had already received visits from three tailors and two shoemakers, with a jeweler expected that afternoon. Despite her gratitude, Courtney felt exhausted by the overwhelming attention. She had turned them all away, unsure of what His Highness meant by that. Ironically, the more she rejected his gifts, the grander they became. So if I refuse these as well, she thought, exasperated. Behold, the attendant exclaimed, showcasing jewels. 
I have everything from the elusive sapphires of the Fallen Kingdom to the pink diamonds straight out of Mermaid Legends. I have it all. Ellie, would you look at this? Wasn't the dowry enough? He's truly outdone himself this time. Courtney marveled at the display. Is this a real diamond? It's huge. Of course. As valuable as it is, it's still waiting for the perfect owner to come along. This is the one. Look, Courtney. The crown princess deserves nothing but the best. Is this one too? It was made for you. Excuse me? I thought they were here to offer their expertise. What is the meaning of this? But this isn't better suited for me. Courtney countered, noticing how the earrings accentuated Ellie's eyes. Really? Ellie asked, beaming. What do you think? Does it suit me? Drop everything now. Honestly, you can be so stingy. Ellie teased. I wasn't going to take anything. I only intended to borrow something of yours. Courtney protested. It's not mine, so don't even think about it. Despite her mother's wishes, Courtney had no intention of squandering the imperial fortune on her family's lavish spending and gambling habits. Her highness has arrived, someone announced. How did he manage to recover so quickly? Courtney recalled how she could only throw punches that night, suggesting he hadn't sustained any serious injuries. This spread has never been seen before in the Devon household. Auntie, try this. It's yummy. Edvard urged. Edvard, you never offered Papa a taste. But you eat just fine on your own, he shot back. Auntie, isn't it yummy? Sure is, she replied. Marriage was the right choice. Looks like we'll be living the high life from now on, right? Surely His Majesty won't just send a few gifts our way and be done with it. Dream on. Stop spewing nonsense. Hey, is that any way to talk to your brother? Can you blame me? Enough. Do you honestly think Courtney will turn her back on families? Courtney found herself wishing to spruce up the gardens and hoped they would send a landscaper. Why don't we throw a tea party once the garden is done up? She suggested. Why not? Who would decline a tea party hosted by the crown princess herself? We'll send out the fanciest invitations. Courtney felt a wave of panic. I can't breathe. Why isn't anyone asking me if I actually want this marriage? A marriage she was entering completely empty-handed, with no one questioning why. The crown prince wants to marry me. How is this any different from being sold off? Aunties? Help yourself, Eddie. I'll eat later. I have to see the prince. What about me caught your fancy? She wondered aloud. I shall come by your estate soon to explain everything, he replied. I'll go ahead and set up a meeting with him first, Hansen said, turning to leave. Forget saving face. Please deliver this letter for me. It's urgent. Are you all right? Hansen asked, noticing her distress. I refuse to be swayed any longer, Courtney asserted, determined.